Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Wednesday, January 26th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr. The Notre Dame game is in 220 days. The game against Michigan in 305 days. On yesterday's show, we talked a lot about name, image, and likeness rights at the national level. And because timing is everything, just a few moments after Peter Schoenthal and I ended that show and hung up, Ohio State released information about a new NIL program it was launching. So today, we're going to take a closer look at that and what it could mean for Ohio State in the NIL world. My guest today is Buckeye Scoop's Tony Gertham. He wrote about the new NIL Edge team at the site this week. Tony, thanks for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a wonderful surprise to be on. A rare, a rare pleasure, indeed. Uh, before we dive into that, there was a stat in that press release from Ohio State that got a lot of attention. It was that Ohio State ranked first in the nation in three different areas of NIL so far. So can you explain what those three areas are and what that actually means? Yeah, so Ohio State has aligned itself with an NIL, I guess, company called Open Doors. And there's a few of these where they they educate, they can uh, find deals for players and, and, and certain things like that. So there's a few companies around the nation that have done this. Obviously, these are all startups because this is brand new. But so you have uh, from the numbers, 220 student athletes at Ohio State have engaged in 608 reported NIL activities with a total compensation value of $2.98 million. All three of those ranked number one in open doors uh, in their figures. And, and I'm assuming, and they don't spell this out and they don't say this, but I'm assuming this is just among open doors schools, of which dozens to hundreds all around, all, all around the country. But so you know, this, is, this is an Ohio State athletics department with 37 varsity sports you know, thereabouts. And so 220 student athletes have taken part in some form or fashion. Uh, that 2.98 million, I think over those 220 students averages about $13,000 per student. Now you're probably right in assuming that a lot of that money is, is football and, and men's basketball. Uh, so don't, 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 don't take those averages as a, uh, on a per student athlete basis, but yeah, 608, um, deals basically signed among the 220 students. So yeah, uh, a lot going on there for sure for the Ohio State student athletes. Yeah, it's it's a lot of money. And then, you know, the question we were talking beforehand was, so, you know, you you heard big, you hear big numbers thrown around and, you know, Nick Saban's throwing around that Bryce Young is getting a million dollar deal. And, uh, you know, you heard about Quinn Ewers getting these huge deals, but you never really heard the terms, you know, were those, you know, was that, you know, the big splashy number, was that spread over three to four years, you know, or, or was this just a one year thing like boom, one time payment? So, you know, I, I think a lot of those numbers may not be, you know, the, the big splashy number may not totally be ca- counted in that, you know, in that total number. But yeah, to your point, the uh, the mean of those numbers may be 13,000. I would guess the median student athlete is not making $13,000 uh, on the Ohio State campus right now. You know, there have been a lot of people concerned that Ohio State was not being aggressive enough in the NIL space, that schools like Texas A&M and others were just kind of like running laps around the Buckeyes because they were being too conservative with the school's involvement. It seems like this new NIL pro, uh, edge program that they are in, introducing this week is maybe a little bit of an effort to address that. Yeah, and even in the Ohio State release, the, the senior uh, associate athletics director who is uh, in charge of all of this, the NIL programs, Kerry Hoyt said that, uh, and I'll quote, our guidelines were initially created to be restrictive, but now that we have a better understanding of NIL, it's clear that we can provide more assistance in connecting student athletes with interested brands. And the, when all of this was started, there was so much, this is, this is the wild West. We don't actually know a lot of the rules. Like, you know, what you can't, you can't do. But there's a lot of learning of what you can do, and that's that's always the way college athletes athletics have been, where you're pushing the boundaries. So, so this is legal when I do this, and okay, but this is too far. But if I go right up to this line, that's legal. So I'm going up to the line, and you figure out how far can you go, what exactly can you do, and now that they have a better understanding, like I said, I think it's been like six months since, since this started. So yeah, this new edge program is, uh, I think it, it's very big it's it i don't know how many other programs had have this or how many had this initially but what ohio state is now able to to do is like it's an immense thing where each 
basically each um, sport has their own, essentially an agent mm-hmm. to look for deals, provide a, you know, d- deal makers come looking, you know, uh, companies come looking for them, say, Hey, who do you have? And it's like, we've got, we've got three uh, senior pistol shooters here that are, you know, really, you know, whatever. And now it's just a uh, Ohio state is now uh, essentially, I guess, kind of almost getting into the brokering business mm-hmm. where uh, before they would just stay away and just make sure no rules were being broken. But what has changed all of this is the influx of the, the, the donor led, the alum led uh, charities and LLCs and all those things that, that has really I think been one of the unintended, unintended consequences, but one of those things that you could have foreseen happening. Yeah. I, what's fascinating to me about this whole thing is, you know, we, we heard from Ryan day multiple times last year, every time Ryan day was talked to about NIL, he talked about the fact that, you know, we can't, set these deals up. This isn't that, you know, that's, that's not something we as a program can do. And it's starting to look based on what, you know, Ohio State's now talking about doing like that may not be true. And that's not Ryan Day's fault. That's just, you know, this was, this was done. uh, This whole process basically started with the NCAA completely abdicating its responsibility to be the grownups in the room and just kind of throwing up their hands and going, well, fine, if you want to do this, then fine, you figure it out. And so now everyone's just kind of figuring it out. That's that's what last fall was and what this year and, you know, the changes that you're seeing right now, that's kind of what this is. Because, you know, they were, they were you know, last fall, Ohio State was under the impression, you know, as, a, as an administration, as a, an athletic department, that they couldn't really, you know, broker deals or help facilitate deals between players and, and businesses. The businesses had to just kind of go and, you know, approach the student athlete, approach Ohio State, and then they could do it. They couldn't, Ohio State couldn't, you know, connect them. And then the release says that uh, they, uh, quote, may work with companies and brands to assist in the NIL process. So that that does feel a little bit to me like they looked at some of the other, you know, the way maybe other programs are were interpreting those rules last fall and kind of went, well, they're not in jail yet. So... I guess like sort of, you know, if, even if that is a rule and no one's enforcing it, or if the rule is written vaguely and wow, poorly written NCAA rules, get out of here. I don't, I don't believe it. Uh, You know, if the rule is written vaguely or it's open to interpretation and it's not being enforced right now, like, well, maybe you don't have a rule. Well, and really the only rules I believe are schools can't create these deals. They can't pay the players and the, the athletes can't take money for play. Now that's a wink, wink type of thing in, the, in terms of recruiting and the transfer portal. But other than that, at this point, it, it sure seems like the more hand, if you want to be hands-on, go be hands-on. And that's what you're seeing all around the nation. And I think you initially had like the BYU thing where, uh, Everybody was given a thousand dollars or whatever it was from from a uh, what a nutrition bar company or something like that. And then you saw the the Texas thing and Miami had a thing, but like the Texas offensive line thing that was really the one of those what is starting to come up now known as an NIL collective, and that's the donors, the alums setting up these companies, and uh, all of these all of those companies need to be on the up and up and the players that interact with them need to be on the up and up. So there are still, like, there are still rules. There are still NCAA rules that need to be followed. The, the wild West aspect of it is just that not knowing necessarily what the, what are the rules in this town is, is murder. Okay. Uh, or is it just, you know, maiming. And, and so now that you're learning the rules, then you bring in this this uh, edge team, and the other thing that it can do is they're also then monitoring the rules and monitoring. I'm assuming what other schools are doing and what is what is being allowed, what is being restricted, what is saying no. That's you've gone past the fence, come back, and then they can change with that, and they can do more. And I, I don't think it's going to get any smaller. And as they see success with this, it's only going to get larger. But uh, it's. It also, and what maybe one of the reasons the coaches will like it, I think it takes some of the the work off the plate of the student athlete 
because now this is another area where you've got the school working for them to go find them deals. And now they don't have to necessarily worry about it as much and they can get back to football. Yeah. And, and, you know, get back to football and get back to basketball, but also get back to hockey and baseball and mm-hmm. softball and track and soccer. I mean, cause you, you mentioned earlier, they are uh, appointing a point of contact, someone who is like specifically they spell out, this is not a coach. So this is not the track coach is going to be this person is going to be, there is going to be a point of contact for the track team, a point of contact for the soccer team, a point of contact for the lacrosse team for each of the 36 varsity sports at Ohio state. To me, that's interesting because it seems like that may be a spot where, you know, football, you're going to be competing against a lot of other people throwing around a lot of money at a lot of different schools. Some of those other sports, which are, you know, the, whether you want to call them the non-rev sports or the Olympic sports or whatever, you know, Ohio state has a very, very good team. The women's hockey team is I think number two in the country right now and doesn't get a lot of attention, but if you, you know, you may be able to leverage that if you have a little bit more of a robust program specifically for the women's hockey team or specifically for the women's soccer team or the men's lacrosse team or whatever it is, that may be an opportunity to really leverage something where a lot of other schools, you know, number one, don't have those programs, but number two, you know, that you might be able to really explore some opportunities there in terms of, I mean, I talked to Peter uh, about this on yesterday's show, lessons teaching lessons, coach, you know, doing like coaching for, for pay during the off season, all that kind of stuff where that could really provide advantage for you in recruiting, you know, when there's, you know, th- th- that's not, you know, th- that's not necessarily a sport where you're going to get a million dollar kombucha deal or uh, a big, you know, a big fancy pickup truck or something like that. Some, you know, s- smaller deals like that could end up being a little bit of a differentiator for them on, on uh, a lot of those different fronts too. You go back to, I think it was 2018, perhaps when Gene Smith started talking about this and this started to, you knew it was happening. It just a matter of time as to when it would. And he said that Ohio state, this is only going to help Ohio state because of the size of that they are. And the fact that they're always at the forefront of whatever, and this is just the next thing. So of course they're going to do what they can to uh, take full advantage of it. And you're talking about the the women's hockey, like these programs that will have stuff to offer, not just in recruiting, but the transfer portal. Like w- when you get in there and you start digging around and say, you know, we got a spot and we've got a three thousand dollar, you know, whatever to this, and we've got this, mm-hmm. you know, twenty five hundred for for you know being part of this and these uh, these operations directors for each of the programs, I are going to be. A lot more busy. Like, I don't know, these jobs are just being created out of thin air, but if they're, you know, are, are, are these people that are already on staff and, you know, you used to be like Mark Pantone's assistant, you know, the OSU recruiting director, but now you're going to handle, say, baseball and you're going to be busier than ever because you're, you're looking for players, you're handling deals, you're, you're, um, you're, you're part of, I think, perhaps the recruiting thing as well. Like, you know, you need to know who's out there, um, you know, how interested they would be in whatever Ohio State has to offer. And it's it's a new, um, just an entirely new directory, basically, of the organization chart of, you know, who, who does this fall under? If this is football, does this, is this under Mark Pantone? Is this a separate branch under Ryan Day? Uh, it's, um, it, it's a kind of a, an interesting new world to follow. And you wonder, like, you know how fans know, Ohio State fans know Mark Brantoni's name. Are they going to know the Ohio State football operations director's name? And it's like, uh, you know, why isn't, why aren't they getting any deals? Why this, why that? Are they st- going to start measuring him? Will those positions start showing up on the recruiting websites and being measured as well? Uh, my answer to that is, uh, do compliance officers' names sometimes show up on the, on those websites? They sure mm-hmm. do. Well, there you go. Ohio State football fans, pretty invested in Ohio State football. This breaking news brought to you by Buckeye Scoop and uh, and by Tony Gerderman and uh, the Buckeye Weekly podcast and all of the other great podcasts that we do talking about Ohio State football because we know you guys care about Ohio State football. So we do a lot of talking about Ohio State football on our Ohio State football podcast. Buckeye Weekly, Gives in the Bank, uh, Big Me Kickoff, Around the Oval, all those great shows. You can find them wherever you're listening to this show. 
Just uh, search Buckeyes Coop to find all of those. You can uh, subscribe right there. Leave us a five-star rating and review, which will help other folks find those shows. And also, if you prefer to watch our smiling faces while we're talking to you about Buckeye football, you can do that at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. We uh, post all those podcasts on YouTube. We also post player and coach interviews, camp videos, highlights, whatever. You name it. It's all there. YouTube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. Uh, hit that bell. Subscribe to that channel. And then whenever you're watching one of our, our videos, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, that helps other folks find those shows. It's a very easy thing you can do to help other folks find our shows as well. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.